Eiffel. London, 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 London. This is Coogan Cancers for Eiffel London. We're at York Hall for a prize fight, a light middleweight's free. With me, I've got promoter Eddie Hearn. Um, a very exciting prize fight for the fans tonight, Eddie. Yeah, it was, it was one of the better ones. Up there with probably the best of them. Sometimes every prize fighter, a story unfolds. And listen, Larry Ekendale is a class fighter. But for me, Terry Carruthers was a story tonight, you know. He's a guy who travels all over the country taking fights at the last minute and getting a couple of grand here for six rounders. And, and you know, to come away with 16,000 and to make a name for himself. I'm really chuffed for, for Terry Carruthers. I thought it was fantastic. Larry Ekendale, obviously um, the, the person with the least amount of fights has ever won prize fight, two fights. Um, it's quite a good story. I mean, a lot of people did fancy Larry from the, from the start. What, why do you think that was? He's, he's a quality operator, but you, when someone's had two fights, you never really know how good they are. I mean, you know, he was a decent amateur. He fought in the Commonwealth Games, and Spencer fearon has been harping on at me for months and months about Larry Ekendale. We put him on as a prize fighter prospect uh, a few months ago. And you could tell he had talent, but you don't really know at 2-0 and o what kind of talent he's got. But, you know, he beat Craig McEwen. I thought that was a really, really tight fight. I felt it could have gone either way. He beat Chris Carslaw well, and then he, he really dismantled Terry Carruthers, who I think had the effects of a, a very difficult semi-final as well, taken out of him. But still, he was head and shoulders, I feel, above the rest of the field tonight. And at 2-0, and o, you know, now 5-0, and o, the real problem comes now, he's just won £34,000. You know, it takes a special kind of fighter now to understand that he's still learning, that he's still on a journey, and now he's got to step back probably to six or eight rounders for much, much less money. You know, and that's something that, you know, they've got to understand about prize fighter. But, you know, he's, he's now projected himself to a new level. He's made a massive name for himself, and he can go on and, and be a, a very good fighter. Don't forget, he's a welterweight as well. You know, he should be fighting... Well, the 11 stone 2 was the limit for this. He's really £9 lighter than that, so I think he's a very, very decent decent prospect. Um, with Larry's win today, um, is there anything that you potentially could see yourself doing for Larry in the future? Yeah, you know, one thing we've got to look at is obviously his position in terms of what titles he can fight for. We've got such a big team of fighters now, and you know, it's difficult to give everybody the opportunity that you promise them. And we'd never take a fighter on that we couldn't deliver. You know, if we couldn't deliver what we promised him. So I'll sit down with Spencer. You know, I think he's a, a great talent. So obviously you want to showcase him on, on the shows. Maybe we'll look at getting him on the December 8th bill as well. Um, you know, I've had a few people tweeting tonight saying, oh, Matrim fighter one again. Larry Ekendale's got absolutely nothing to do with Matrim whatsoever, other than Spencer Fearon texting me and calling me for about a year about him. I gave him this opportunity and he's taking it with both hands. So good luck to him. Um, you know, and, and of course, you know, we'll sit down. He's, he's got a big platform now to build on. But, um, I don't know, it was interesting tonight. There's a couple of strange judging decisions. What did you think? I mean, I've, so a lot of people felt McEwen beat him. I thought it was really tight. thought Larry just did that little bit more on a work rate, but McEwen probably landed the crisper shots, the better work. And then I thought Ryan Toms beat Carslaw, to be honest with you. I thought he won that fight 2-1. Um, and then some people felt Carslaw... Had a close fight with Ekendale, but I felt he won that 2-1. How did you see it? I think a few people were also saying about the Mansourian um, yeah. uh, fight yeah, with uh, Carruthers as well. That could have gone either again, way as I, well. So I, I actually felt Mansouri won that yeah, fight. I, that, I felt Mansouri won that as well. The only thing was is the pressure that Carruthers applied. Yeah. I, I spoke to Dave Caldwell Mansouri. I said, you, just, you boxed almost like it was a six or an eight rounder. Yeah. And sometimes if it's a tight round, you might say, do you know what? I'll give it to Carruthers on work rate. Right. So. I, I did feel that Mansouri won that fight, but you can't begrudge someone like Terry Carruthers, you know. And the look on his face when he won that fight was, wow, well, 16 grand. And I just said to him, in the, you know, after in the, um, and when I went over to him in the corner, I said, oh, listen, unlucky. He said, oh, I'm gutter. I said, listen, just won 16 grand. Go and have a great Christmas and a holiday with your family, you know. It's, sometimes that's what prize fight is all about, not just giving opportunities to prospects, but giving opportunities to servants of the sport, you know, who deserve, deserve some um, glory. Um, the added incentive today of the two grand bonus, obviously, it's only two grand that's actually coming out because that was Larry's, uh, the final fight that produced that. But could you see something effectively in the fighters today that um, you could tell that that was maybe in the back of their mind? It's hard to tell with people like Curtis Valentine yeah. because Curtis is, is going for that big punch anyway. Yeah, I think sometimes, you know, you, you should never go into the fight thinking, oh, two grand, come on. But if the opportunity's there to finish him. And Larry, I think, was a good example of that. In the last round, he was winning the fight two rounds to zero, but he chose to step on the gas and stop him. You know, and I think that was a classy ending. But you know, little things like this, you've always got to keep thinking and keep revolutionising the tournament. Um, I was sitting there thinking, blimey, it looks like I'm not going to have to pay one two grand here. And I wouldn't really have liked that because 
no, it's, it's the new idea and you want to pay someone out at least, but it just means that you and me will have to have no mustard on our salt beef bagel on the way home. <laughs> um, when can fans expect to see the next prize fight? Early part of next year? Yeah, end of January we're going to come back with something very, very big. Um, stay tuned for that. Because, Is there a uh, weight that you haven't done yet? We haven't done flyweights. Minimum weight? Minimum weight, straw weight. Straw weight? Yeah. Um, no, but I think you know we're going to come back. We've got we've got some big plans with uh, a big prize fight at the end of January with a big top of the bill on the same night. So um, London or up north? London, London. So you know, listen, prize fight will always have its knockers, and some will be good, some will be bad. Then you have a great tournament like this, and everyone goes, "Oh, prize, brilliant!" I'm a tw you know, twit us now. Oh, that was the best prize fight. Yeah, I love prize fight. You know, not every prize fight is going to be great, but it is. You know, it does exactly what it says on the tin. It was packed in here tonight, we were sold out, and at the end of the final, there was still the same amount of people in here that were in here at the start of the night. Peter Vaughan fans, Ryan Tom's fan, Curtis fans, they all stay till the end, it's because it's entertaining. It's not one-sided, every fight there tonight, you really didn't know who was gonna win. And that is the key to keeping the sport interesting. You know, so like I said, prize fighter, you know, I read the forums all the time. The boxing enthusiasts will say, oh, prize fighter, it's this, it's that. It's entertaining, we sell out every venue, it delivers something a little bit different for the sport. You know, I'm not saying it's pure class championship boxing. I'm just saying it's fast-paced, exciting, and it's going to more and more countries now all around the world. The TV broadcasters around the world are loving Prize Fighter, and yeah, we've got to embrace it because I'm not. You know, I don't know whether there'll be eight more or 28 more, like I said to you at the weigh-in. But we'll keep delivering. We'll keep up in the tempo. We'll keep trying to make changes, and, and you know, we, we want to keep this going for a long time. Right, Edward Hearn, thank you very much for talking to us from London. Uh, match room's next show will be the 17th of November at uh, Nottingham Arena for Carl Frotch, Yusef Mack. Correct, Tony Ballou. Tony, Tony Ballou. So, uh, yeah, we'll see you in the lead up to that, that Look week. Forward to it. Look forward to it. It's Coogan Cassius with Eddie Hearn for iFilm London. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.